Viewers at home, welcome to Home Learning. Uh, our subject today is bookkeeping and accounts, JC level. And then last time we were still discussing the general journal and we listed about 10 uses of the general journal. And the previous use, which was use number 10, was the general journal being used to calculate capital. Uh, in the case of the owner of the business starting the business with only the assets and the liabilities, no cash uh, being introduced. And we said using the general journal, we are able to compare the assets against the liabilities that were made at the beginning of the uh, 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 period. And then the difference between the two will actually give us our opening capital for that business. So we said we use the general journal, uh, which is a, a subsidiary book used to record the calculating of capital. And under the general journal, we usually open what we call the opening statement, where the assets are being shown on the debit side with the liabilities being shown on the credit side. And then thereafter, the difference between the two sides is your capital. And then we then posted everything to the ledger because the general journal is a subsidiary book. Then it means every recording that we have done in a subsidiary book should end up being posted into the ledger. So we then posted to the ledger under the accounts. We opened the accounts. If it was an asset on the debit side, we were recording the amount of capital because we said if the owner brings in assets, then it means those assets they are representing capital. Had the owner maybe get hold of cash, he would have uh, went on to buy the assets himself or herself. And then we said under liabilities, we're going to credit the liabilities with the amount of capital. Let us say suppliers uh, were able to give us credit and if the suppliers give us the credit, then it means to us that is capital. Instead of having cash to obtain the goods from the suppliers, the suppliers were willing to offer the goods to us with payment uh, 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 coming at a later date. So today we're going to talk about uh, use number 11, which is almost the last use of the general journal, which is the issue of uh, the general journal used to correct errors. So the trial balance uh, is a statement that is prepared in the books of accounts. So we're saying from the source document, we're going to represent it by SD, the source document. We're saying the recording process uh, continues to the subsidiary books. From the subsidiary books, we then post to the ledger. And from the ledger, we then prepare a certain statement, which is called the trial balance. So this statement uh, merely is for us to try and uh, ascertain whether our recording that is from the subsidiary book to the ledger was accurate in terms of uh, uh, arithmetical errors and the completeness of the double entry system. So it means if there were, there were any additions and subtractions that were not done correctly, the trial balance will simply detect such. So it means the trial balance as a list of debit and credit balances extracted from the ledger is able to detect where there was an addition a, a mistake. So let us say you wanted to add 1,000 malangeni with 700 malangeni. And then by mistake, you ended up saying this is amounting to 8,000 malangen, assuming that the 700 was a 7,000. So with the trial balance, such mistakes are going to be uh, discovered because the trial balance will tend not to agree or to be in agreement if there was a mistake on addition and sub subtraction. So we add a lot in accounting when it comes to balancing of accounts and we also subtract a lot in accounting when it comes to subtracting maybe any payment that was being made by a data or any payment made to a creditor. So the trial balance is able to detect errors such as arithmetical accuracy and the completeness of the double entry. And then by completeness of the double entry we mean 
that for the double entry system to be completed, there has to be a debit entry with a corresponding credit entry. So it is called the double entry system because uh, there are two entries that we are supposed to record for every transaction that has occurred. So the trial balance will simply detect where there was a credit and we failed to come up with the debit in the books of accounts. So let us say we are buying maybe goods on cash. By buying the goods on cash basis, it means the cash book is supposed to be credited uh, because it is seen losing money and the account to be debited will be our purchases account in the general ledger. So let us say we are able to credit the cash book uh, 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 as a subsidiary book but mistakenly we left out maybe uh, the debit entry in the purchases account when it comes to the general ledger. So it means when it comes to preparing the trial balance, the trial balance will tend not to agree because the credit side has a, a representation, meaning that the cash book was seen losing. Then here we are now uh, 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 missing an entry on the debit side. So it means when it comes to the trial balance, the trial balance will simply reflect that there is an amount, let us say, of 20 Malangeni, which was recorded on the credit side without a, another 20 Malangeni on the debit side in order for the trial balance to be in agreement. So as per the double entry system, if we buy goods, then it means the purchases will be here. The purchases will be here and the cash account will be seen losing. That is uh, 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 on the credit side. So it means that uh, the trial balance as a statement is able to detect such mistakes where mistakenly as bookkeepers were able to record the debit and we failed to uh, record the corresponding uh, uh, credit. However, the trial balance... Uh, is uh, uh, unable to reveal certain mistakes. And then these mistakes are what we are going to talk about today. The trial balance will be seen being in agreement, which means that the debit side equals to the credit side. Let us say the debit side amounted to 500, with the credit side also amounting to 500. Both sides might be equal in the presence of mistakes. Was saying the trial balance is able to detect mistakes on additions and subtractions, and it is able to detect mistakes on the completeness of the double entry. However, the trial balance can show a 500 Malangeni on the debit side with a corresponding 500 Malangeni on the credit side, and the learner will come out of the exam punching, saying, I have a total for that particular question, when in fact there was a certain mistake. So let us try and look at those mistakes which might be present and causing our trial balance to, to mislead us in balancing uh, 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 off. So the first mistake is the error of omission. The word omit comes from leaving out something. So this is when a transaction has been completely overlooked in the books of accounts. So let us say we were recording if we are recording in the books of accounts, we rely on source documents. So those source documents are those invoices, those cash slips, and those debit notes and credit notes kept on those uh, filing cabinets. So let us say mistakenly the bookkeeper uh, misplaces or overlooks a certain invoice, only for the invoice to be discovered at a later date. Then we call it uh, the error of omission. So a transaction has been completely overlooked in the books of accounts. It might be that the source document was misplaced. So if the source document is misplaced, then it means nowhere we are going to see such a transaction. Why? Because we are saying the accounting recording process, it is a process that is in a form of a, of a chain. If you have a source document, you are able to record in a subsidiary book. By having a subsidiary book, you are able to 
post to the ledger. By posting to the ledger, we are able to extract the trial balance so as to test whether there were mistakes on uh, the completeness of the double entry and arithmetical accuracy. So it means if we misplace one of the source documents, then it means that particular transaction won't be seen anywhere in the books of accounts. So let us have an example. Uh, on the 5th of June, furniture bought for 400 check. This was not recorded in the books of accounts by mistakes. We all know that mistakes are done every day. So let us say this bookkeeper was uh, 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 mistakenly, he or she was unable to record this uh, particular transaction. So the general journal is then a subsidiary book used to correct such mistakes. So let us see as to how are these mistakes corrected. For the error of omission, we are saying here there was no mistake other than not recording the entry or the transaction in the books of accounts. So what we have to do as bookkeepers is to come up with the double entry, which was supposed to be initially recorded uh, by the bookkeepers for this particular mistake. So if furniture is bought for 400 cash, we are saying the two aspects, they are furniture and bank or cash at bank, which is represented by the word check. So it means the mistake is that the trial balance is not going to be in agreement because the trial balance has an, uh, has an, uh, an aspect which is on the debit side, lacking by 400, with an aspect which is re uh, representing the credit side that is lacking by 400 temalangen. So it means the 400 temalangen that is missing on the debit side and the 400 temalangen that is missing on the credit side will tend to set off each other such that the trial balance will continue to be in agreement even if uh, such a uh, transaction was uh, left out. So let us try and have an example uh, of how uh, this might uh, happen. We are saying in the presence of the error of omission, the trial balance can still be in agreement. So let us say we had our, our initial transaction. Remember our initial transaction, we had purchases. We said bought goods for maybe 500 uh, maybe on credit. So the two aspects are purchases and creditors. So we're going to have purchases and credit creditors. So creditors, they are supposed to be on the credit side of the trial balance to represent that these are liabilities. And then purchases is supposed to be on the debit side to represent that this is an expense account. So which means if we had our trial balance containing these two items, it will have balanced in showing a 500 temalangeni on the debit side with a 500 temalangeni also on the credit side. So let us say our trial balance was able to balance in the presence of uh, 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 these uh, mistakes. So we're saying with the error of omission, uh, the trial balance will continue to agree whether the transaction was there or not. By inserting the transaction in the books of accounts, the trial balance is going to still agree because the, each and every transaction has an effect of offsetting each uh, 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 amount that was recorded because of the double entry system. So if we buy furniture, if we buy furniture by check of 400, then it means here we are going to see the trial balance being added up by 400 temalangeni uh, uh, as a furniture. And we are going to have another new aspect which is bank, bank losing by 400 temalangeni. So using mathematics or met, your maths uh, learner at home, you are able to see that if there is a positive plus a negative, uh, we, if you take your calculator, that amounts to a zero. We are introducing bank, 
The reason why I'm putting bank in brackets is because the bank is losing. Furniture is gaining. So by having furniture gaining, it means the 400 is supposed to be a positive one when it comes to the trial balance. But our bank is supposed to have a negative a, 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 a figure. So if you balance off your trial balance, you are going to realize that the credit side is still showing a 500 and the debit side is also uh, still showing a 500. A 500 plus a positive 400 plus a negative 400 is equal to a 500. So why is the 400 a negative? It's because bank is losing. Why is bank on the debit side? It's because bank is a current asset. All uh, uh, assets have debit balances. Why is furniture recorded on the debit side of the trial balance? It's because this is an asset. All assets are recorded on the debit side. So which means the trial balance will continue to be in agreement whether furniture bought for 400 check is present or, or not. So which means in correcting such, we then prepare the general journal, which is a subsidiary book used to correct such. So remember that the general journal, it is having its own specifications. The debited account is recorded first, uh, followed by the credited aspects. So if we are going to say here, yeah, we are going to debit furniture and credit bank, then it means when it comes to uh, the recording, we are going to say furniture is going to be debited by 400 Temalangeni to actually reflect what they were supposed to do in the first place. And bank account is supposed to be, to be credited to reflect that there was an error of omission. We overlooked the transaction. So the effect of overlooking the transaction is none at all when it comes to the trial balance because of the double entry system. What we have done on the debit side is offset it by, by what we are going to do uh, in the uh, credit side. So thereafter, after the credited aspect, remember it is supposed to leave uh, or it, uh, the credited aspect is supposed to be written away from the margin. After the credited aspect, we have to narrate an error of omission corrected. So why are we narrating using the name of the mistake, unlike with the previous uses of the general journal where we were narrating with the transaction itself. Here we are saying to the one who is going to uh, read what we have done that we have corrected an error of omission. So if you are going to come and read that there was an error of omission corrected, you will tend to know why we have debited furniture and credited bank. So let us go to mistake number number two. Mistake number two was saying the first one, the general journal is used for correcting the error of omission. By mistake, we have failed to record in the books of accounts. Leaving out the transaction at all means that the debit side is not showing any increase or decrease and with the debit, uh, credit side uh, likewise. So the second one is the error of commission. This is when a transaction was recorded in the wrong person's account by mistakes. So when it comes to, when it comes to the books of accounts, we are saying there are individuals that are supposed to be shown in the books of accounts. And those individuals, they include the owner himself or herself. They also include the individuals who have taken goods on credit from us. Remember we said if a data uh, is uh, 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 recorded in the books of accounts, it means uh, uh, that individual took goods on credit from us. And we also have individuals such as creditors, that is our suppliers, whom as a business were able to obtain goods on credit. So when you talk about the error of commission, we are saying this is when a transaction was recorded in the wrong person's account. 
So mistakenly, as bookkeepers, we might assume that uh, we have recorded in the wrong person's account, uh, in the correct person's account, when in fact we have recorded in the, in the wrong person's. So let us look at how this mistake occurs. When you look at the example that is being given, if you look at the two uh, uh, individual names, Zuma and Zama, they are all uh, uh, maybe looking uh, the same to you, Lena, at home. So instead of recording in Zuma's account, we can mistakenly record in Zama's account. Remember, some of us are wearing glasses, so you might find that your glasses, they now need uh, you to change the lenses. So as a bookkeeper, you might see the Zuma uh, like a Zama. So in the books of account, we call it the era of commission. So on the 6th of June, goods sold on credit to Zuma for 200 was recorded by mistake in Zama's account. So the question here is, why is the trial balance uh, uh, going to continue to be in agreement in the presence of such mistake. So let us draw our let us have our small trial balance on this side. So let us say uh, maybe uh, there were two debtors Zuma and Zama. These debtors had bought goods on credit from us. Let us say the goods that were bought were worth 100 emalangen. And then mistakenly, we recorded what was supposed to be recorded in Zuma's account. We recorded it in Zama's account. So let us say initially, uh, when it comes to the transaction, let us say 700 emalangen word of goods were sold, which means our sales account is going to show a 700 Malangan on the credit side. So let us say, instead of recording the 200 Malangan in, instead of recording the 200 Malangan in Zuma's account, we ended up uh, recording the 200 Malangan in Zama's account. So when you look at Zuma in the trial balance, Zuma is showing 100 Malangani. Zama is showing a 600 Malangani, which means the total amount of goods that we sold to these individuals is 700 Malangani. So remember, the double entry system always offsets the entries in the books of accounts by having a 700 Malangani on the debit side, for, which is a sum for Zuma and Zama's amount owed. It means this sum is offset by the 700 Malangani, which is reflected by sales. So let us say, mistakenly, Zama was supposed to show a 400 Malangani. But when you look at our trial balance, Zama is showing a 600 Malangani. We are saying the correct figure for Zuma was supposed to be 300 Malangani. 300 Malangani for Zuma the amount of goods that he took from us, 400 malangani worth of goods that were taken by Zama. So which means on the left-hand side, these are the correct figures. Whilst on the right-hand side, these are what? These are the wrong figures. We mistakenly recorded 200 malangani of goods sold to Zuma in Zama's account. So which means that was an effect of increasing the amount owed by Zama. Zama is now owing us 600 emalangeni instead of the 400 emalangeni. Zuma is now being seen owing 100 emalangeni instead of a 300 emalangeni. So why are we saying the trial balance will continue to be in agreement? It is because even if you can take these 300 and 400 and insert it in, and uh, insert board figures in or on the debit side, we are going to still have a 700 on the debit side. So a 100 plus a 600 is equals to a 700, which was wrong. A 300 plus a 400 on the debit side will also amount to a 700, which is the correct, uh, 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 which are the correct uh, figures. And then the 700 Malangan for sales will still 
remain on the credit side as a 700. So it means as bookkeepers, whether we have 100 Temalangani and 600 Temalangani, respectively, the total balance will still show a 700 Temalangani on the debit side. Whether we bring in 300 and 400 and say it is wrong for us to say Zuma is owing us 100 Temalangan, Zuma is owing us 3, it is wrong for us to say this one is owing us 600 when in fact he is owing us 400. Still, our trial balance is going to be in agreement. So we're saying with the error of permission, this is a mistake where we have recorded in the wrong person's account because some of the names of the debtors and creditors might look alike. Talk of Zandile and talk of Zandi. Someone might end up recording in Zandile's account when in fact it is Zandi who took the codes from us. So let us try and see as to how are we supposed to correct that mistake. It has got no effect of disturbing our trial balance agreement but there is a certain mistake that is going to be seen here. We are going to say Zuma is owing us less when in fact Zuma is owing us more. We are going to keep on reminding Zama to pay something which he does not owe. Zuma, you are owing us 100 Temalangen. You are now done with your payment only to find that Zuma is still they are supposed to give us a 200 uh, a malangeni more. We are going to keep on reminding Zama to pay us 600 malangeni when according to his knowledge Zama is only aware that he is owing us 400 malangeni. So this will create a lot of uh, tension and uh, disturbances in our organization. So let us look at our, uh, as to how are we supposed to correct such so we usually have a T accounts showing both individuals. There is Zuma and there is Zama. So one of the two accounts involved uh, is Zuma, which is the correct account, and Zama, which is the account that they were not supposed to record in. So which means if goods were sold on credit to Zuma, uh, then we are expected to record on the debit side of Zuma's account to reflect that Zuma is receiving the codes. But under this example, we are saying by mistake, we ended up recording in Zama's account. So it means on the debit side of Zama's account, we had a 200 a Malangeni by mistake. So how are we going to correct this one? The double ender system, I like that system because it will help us to correct this mistake. So I usually use arrows to reflect how the double ender system is going to remove the amount from, Zuma, uh, from Zama's account and record it correctly in Zuma's account. So if the 200 Malangani is on this side, assuming that Zama had received the codes when in fact he was not, by correcting this mistake, it means on Zama's account, we should have a 200 Temalangani being recorded on the credit side. According to the accounting principle, if an account has a debit entry, then you record uh, the same amount on the credit side. It means you are cancelling out that entry because the account cannot have a balance carried down. So by recording a 200 Malangani on the credit side of Zama's account, it means we have cancelled out the mistake that was done. And then thereafter, we are then supposed to use the double entry system to say the 200 Malangani was supposed to be on the debit side of Zuma's account. Credit Zama to remove the amount of money that was recorded by mistake and debit Zuma uh, to record the amount that was supposed to be recorded. So your double end will be Zuma, Zuma's account as an individual. Remember Lena at home, some of you they normally uh, for, uh, forget to write the name account and say Zuma. But here we are talking about an account that is representing Zuma in the books of accounts. 
So with our arrows here, we have debited Zuma and credited Zama, Zama's account. So which means your general journal will reflect such. On the credit side of your general journal, we are going to see Zama's account being credited. Thereafter, you have to narrate an error of commission was corrected. So we're saying in this mistake, we've recorded in the wrong person's account. Remember, we have the Dadlas and we have the Lulus. You might end up recording maybe in Lulus account when in fact you wanted to record in in Dadlas account. Error number three involves the error of original entry, which is uh, sometimes doubling up with what we call the transposition error. So let us look at how this mistake occurs and how it does not affect the trial balance agreement. So with this mistake, this is whereby a wrong amount was recorded in the first place using the correct double entry. So let us say uh, we took 300 cash from the bank for office use. This was recorded by mistake as 400 in both accounts affected. So here in this mistake, because mistakenly we recorded the transaction using 400 Malangani, there is no mistake that is going to be detected by the trial balance because uh, these 400 Malangani will affect both the debit side and the credit side of the trial balance. Here we are taking 300 cash from the bank for office use, so it means the debit side is being seen uh, uh, showing a 400 Malangani, with the credit side also showing a 400 Malangani. Once we have one figure recorded twice in the books of accounts, then the trial balance won't be able to detect such, even if the figure was by mistake. So if we took 300 cash from the bank for office use, if this was recorded by mistake as 400 Malangani, then it means from the subsidiary book, we are recording the wrong amount. Up to the ledger, we are still recording the wrong amount. And the trial balance will even be extracted using the wrong amount. So here the trial balance will continue to be in agreement because the amount that was used was used on both the debit side and the credit side when in fact the amount used was not correct. So let us see how you are supposed to correct the error of original entry. We are saying originally we have recorded uh, the wrong amount from the onset. So we open up our two accounts. If we take cash from the bank for office use, then it means the cash register, which is represented by cash account and the bank account, are the two accounts affected. So here, instead of recording 300 Malangani to reflect that the bank is losing here and our cash account is gaining, we ended up recording 400 Malangani. So debit cash account by 400 and credit bank account by 400. Our bank account in this transaction is losing 400 Malangani. The cash, because the cash is taken for office use, the cash register is receiving the 400 Malangani. And we are saying the 400 Malangani was what? Was wrong. Initially, they were supposed to record a 300 Malangani. So how do we correct this mistake? This mistake is corrected using the double entry system and using the accounting procedures. So the accounting procedures clearly state that if we want to increase an account, we record on the same side on which the entries appear. If you want to decrease an account, we record on the opposite side. So it means to increase an account, say, say it with me, to increase an account, same side where the entry or the balance is. To decrease an account, say with me, 
the opposite side is supposed to be uh, seen reflecting the amount of a uh, decrease. So here, instead of recording 300 malangen, we ended up recording 400 malangen. Then it means this was an overcast. This was an overcast or an over addition. How much is the difference? The difference is 100 malangen. So in the books of accounts, what we are supposed to show, it is the difference which will make us to go back to 300 malangen instead of the 400 malangen. So if the cash account was debited with the 400 malangen and the bank account was credited with 400 malangen, which was wrong, then it means the double entry necessary for us is to credit our cash account by 100 malangen and debit our bank account by 400 malangen. Through that action, we have been able to decrease both accounts affected from 400 malangeni to 300 malangen. Because if you can be tasked to uh, calculate the balance carried down for the cash account, we can say the debit side is showing a 400, the credit side is showing a 300, then it means our balance carried down for the cash, acco uh, cash account will be 300 malangen. So it means the brought down will be 300 malangen on the debit side. So by recording 100 malangen on the credit side of the cash account, it means we have decreased the account from 400 to 300. To decrease an account, we record on the opposite side on which the account or the entry was. And then so when it comes to the general journal, we are going to say the account that was debited with 100 malangen was bank account. So bank account was debited by 100 malangen. This is the bank account that we are talking about. And cash account was cash account was credited by 100 ma malangen. So with cash account being credited by 100 malangen then it means we are done with our uh, journal uh, entry. So viewers at home, let us take a short commercial break. We will come back uh, later. I can't sit. Viewers at home, welcome back. We are still uh, discussing the correction of errors that are not revealed by the trial balance. So we have been discussing uh, 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 three errors, which is the error of omission, where a transaction was completely overlooked or not recorded in the books of accounts. And we also went on to discuss the error of commission, where the wrong person's account was used in recording uh, 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 by bookkeepers. So mistake number three, we went on to discuss about the error of original entry where the initial amount that was recorded from the subsidiary book to the trial balance was a wrong amount. So we're saying for the error of original entry, we're going to only uh, work out the difference and see whether it is an overcast or an undercast. And we said if it is an overcast, using the correct double entry, we are going to record on the opposite side so as to decrease both accounts affected uh, to go back to the initial figure. And then where we are experiencing an undercast, we are supposed to record on the same side of the double entry for, for that transaction. So now let us look at the error of transposition, which is just a mistake which is almost similar uh, to the original entry. We are saying this is a mistake whereby we have recorded the wrong amount from the onset only for the digits to be swapped around. Remember from the original entry mistake that we had, the example was showing a 400 malangeni instead of a 300 malangeni. So if you look at the two figures, 
the correct figure being the 300 and the wrong figure being the 400 you will tend to realize that there is a three year in the new figure or the correct figure whilst in the wrong figure there is a four so it means there were no digits that were swapped around when it comes to when it comes to the recording however when we talk about the transposition error was saying initially the amount that was recorded using the correct double entry had its digits swapped around so instead of recording 150 malangani for a loan that was repaid for 150 cash we ended up recording 105 so how do we swap around 150 to make it 105 by mistake so if you take the 5 and bring it on the other side you will tend to have a 105 so it means the transposition error occurs when the digits of the amount in the transaction were swapped around by mistake that is by the bookkeepers so how do we correct that one we also open up the two aspects that were affected and we are saying in order for us to correct the mistake we have to record the mistake first with the error of commission it's a mistake to record in a wrong person's account so using the double entry we are able to record the mistake and remove the amount from the account which is wrong and record it in the correct account with the original entry we first recorded the wrong amount which was a 400 and then we removed the the overcast by recording a hundred malang and on the opposite side of the accounts here with loan and cash which are the two aspects that are affected in this case we are also going to record the mistake first you cannot correct your mistakes uh, uh, until you tend to realize what your mistakes are so if as an individual you continue ignoring that you have mistakes then you cannot correct them so it means as an individual you have to realize first that hey i'm not uh, doing uh, uh, things uh, 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 in a right way when it comes to this so even if we're talking about these mistakes as a bookkeeper or as a learner at home you have to first record the mistake in order for you to correct it so let us say uh, these are the two accounts affected and instead of recording a 150 we ended up recording a 105 so the double end necessary for us as a business if we are repaying a loan it is for us to debit loan account and a credit cash account the loan account being the supplier of the loan businesses they sometimes run short of cash by running short of cash it means they might obtain cash elsewhere so suppliers of loans they are going to give us the amount of money at an interest rate and then thereafter or at a later date we are expected as a business to then repay them back so when we repay a supplier then it means the supplier is supposed to be debited why because the supplier is now receiving what belongs to him back so debit loan account by 105 malangani and credit cash account by 105 malangani to reflect that our cash account is losing and our loan account which is the supplier is receiving so we're then saying instead of recording 150 they ended up recording 105 and these reflect a what these reflect an undercast if you look at the fact that they were supposed to record the bigger figure which is 150 but mistakenly they recorded 105 so our task learners at home is for us to calculate the difference between 105 and 150 which is going to be a 45 so it means there was an undercast of 45 malangan in the books of accounts for this particular transaction so our task now is to correct this undercast 
was saying our trial balance will continue to be an agreement because the same amount, which is 105, was recorded on the debit side, likewise on the credit side. So we go back to our, our accounting principles, which clearly states that we have to record on the same side in order to correct an undercast. In order for us to increase an account, we increase it on the same side. So it means the double entry necessary for us to correct such a mistake will be to debit loan account by 45 and credit cash account by 45. So this is going to be the double entry necessary to correct such. So if you add 105 plus 45, you are now coming to a 150, which was initially supposed to be recorded by the bookkeepers. And then our cash account is now also seen losing 150 instead of the 105 which was uh, shown. So when it comes to the double entry, we are going to say loan account, which is an account representing the supplier of the funds, was debited by 45 Malangeni, and the account that was credited is cash account that is supposed to be credited by the 45 for Malange. And then thereafter we narrate there was a transposition error that was corrected. So let us go to the next mistake. Errors not revealed by the trial balance. We are saying there is the error of principle. So with the error of principle we are saying this occurs when the wrong class of account was used in recording a transaction. And then, then we ask ourselves as to what really are the classes of accounts. What really are the classes of accounts? In the books of accounts, we normally group accounts according to their nature. There are those accounts which are real, accounts which you can touch, and these accounts, they include accounts of assets. There are those accounts which are said to be nominal and those accounts are said to be incomes and expenses. So if you talk about incomes and if you talk about expenses, then we are talking about nominal accounts. And there are personal accounts which include what we have talked about under the era of commission, which is debtors and creditors. And we also do have the fourth class, which is impersonal accounts. When we talk about impersonal accounts, we're talking about the accounts of the proprietor, which is just capital and drawings. So here we're saying there's a mistake that might be done by bookkeepers in recording in the wrong class of account. Instead of recording in a real account, we might mistakenly record in a nominal account. So you will find that the trial balance will still be in agreement because you might find that instead of recording in an asset which was having a debit balance, we ended up recording in an expense which is a debit, which has a debit balance. So on the 9th of June, here is our, uh, an example. Here is our example. Motor repairs of 900 were recorded by mistake in the motor van account. So here we have to also open up the two and say motor, is it supposed to be repairs? No. So we are supposed to say motor repairs account. So remember Lena at home that these are not the real assets or real expenses, but these are accounts representing their, their aspects. So the two aspects are motor van account and motor repairs account. So motor repairs of 900 Malangani were recorded by mistake in the motor van account. So here we are going to make an assumption. Instead of recording in a nominal account, we ended up recording in a real account. So that's why we're saying this is an error of principle. According to the accounting principle, a nominal is supposed to be recorded under nominal accounts. So repairing a motor van, it's something that is not tangible. 
it exists by name. So that, that's why it is supposed to be classified under nominal items. But a motor van is a real item because you can see it and you can also touch it. So we make an assumption as bookkeepers that if motor van is an asset, if they recorded the 900 Temalangani by mistake, the 900 Temalangani was recorded on the debit side. Now we are using our arrows and we are using the double end system. To remove an account or to remove an amount, we record on the opposite side. And every credit entry must always have a corresponding debit entry. So which means using our arrows, we are able to remove the 900 Malangeni on the credit side of motor van and debit uh, our motor repairs by 900 Malangeni. So when it comes to motor van account was credited and we narrate that one by saying this is an error of principle. So usually the error of principle occurs between real accounts and nominal accounts. When we are talking about personal accounts, then the error of commission is there to uh, guide you on how to correct when the wrong person was used in recording in the books of accounts. So let us come to the next mistake E, complete reversal of entries. When introducing bookkeeping uh, with learners in Form 1, you find that some of the learners, they are unable to quickly grasp the system because uh, 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 bookkeeping and accounts is not done uh, in the primary level. So you might find that a learner is unable to come up with the correct double entry for, for a transaction. Who is the receiver, who is the giver, uh, and, uh, uh, and, and, and so on. So here was saying if the wrong double entry was used, the trial balance will continue to be in agreement because the debit side was recorded with the correct amount and the credit side was recorded with the correct amount. So on the 10th of June, a credit I mean loss was paid 670 by check. We debited bank account and we credited mean loss uh, account by mistake. So it is common knowledge for learners to always associate the name creditor with credit. So always learners uh, uh, will credit a creditor when we have circumstances where we are supposed to debit a credit. So we credit a creditor when the creditor is giving us goods. But when we are paying for those goods which you took at a later date, then it means we have to debit the creditor because now the creditor is receiving. So a creditor is debited when he or she is being paid. A creditor is credited when he is giving us goods on credit. So normally for learners, they tend to rhyme credit, creditor, when in fact it is not always the case. So let us open up our two accounts here in order for us to correct this mistake. One of the two accounts affected is mean loss. And then we are saying here, uh, mean loss was paid 670 by check. Instead of debiting mean loss and crediting bank, we ended up recording the wrong double entry. So which means 670 was shown here on the credit side of mean loss and on the debit side, implying that the bank account is receiving and mean loss is giving, when in fact mean loss is receiving, our bank account is losing. So how do we correct such mistake? We are going to remove the 670 by recording 670 on the debit side of Mindlo's account and 670 on the credit side of bank account. You know what happens. Board accounts are nowhere to be seen. Board accounts are now non-existent. If you can be tasked the learners at home to calculate the balance carried down for Mindlo's, you can come up with a zero. If you can calculate the balance carried down for your bank account, you can come up with a zero. 
So with the complete reversal of entries, we then say by recording once on the correct side, the two items or the two entries cancel each other. We are then supposed to give back to the entry by recording another 670. So it means you are supposed to record two 670s because this 670 which was on the debit side, the wrong one, is being cancelled out by the 670 that we record on the credit side. So how many 670s have we recorded on the bank account? They are 1 and 2. How many 670s on Midlow's account on the debit side? They are also 2. So when it comes to the general journal, we are supposed to say Midlow's was debited with two 670s, which is equals to 1340. And then our bank account was credited with two 670s, which was a 1340. So when correcting the complete reversal of entries, unlike the other mistakes, we are supposed to double the amount because by recording the amount once, it means the amount that we have recorded cancel out the amount that was initially recorded as being the wrong amount. So thereafter, you have to narrate a complete reversal of entries. Mistake is corrected. So that is all for today. Lenas at home was saying the last use of the general journal is that the general journal is used to correct mistakes that are not revealed by the trial balance. We have said these mistakes, they include the error of omission where a transaction was completely left out from the books of accounts because maybe of a missing source document. And we said we have the error of commission where the wrong person's account was used instead of recording in a Zadla, we ended up recording in a Lulu. So we are able to correct that one using the general journal. And we went on to talk about the error of original entry, implying that we can use the wrong amount from the onset, that is from the subsidiary book, and the trial balance won't be affected by, by this. And then we also went on to discuss the transposition error, where we said we can also use the wrong amount by swapping around the digits and uh, creating another figure. And we said this resulted in an overcast or an undercast, and we are then supposed to use the accounting principles of increasing an account and decreasing an account. And then we went on to uh, talk about uh, the complete reversal of entries where the wrong double entry was used. And we said to correct that one, we have to record on the correct side and double the amount in order to give back to the transaction. And then thereafter, the error of principle was discussed. We said that was the mistake of recording in the wrong class of account. We said by recording in the wrong class of account, you have to correct that mistake by removing the amount from the wrong um, uh, account and record it in the correct account using double entry. And then lastly, we talked about the compensating error by saying this is a mistake that occurs when a mistake that was done on a debited account or an account with a debit balance offsets with a mistake that was done in an account with a credit balance. So don't go away viewers at home who are coming with more of these topics uh, uh, for JC bookkeeping and accounts. For me, Mr. Shabangu, it's a goodbye.